This conference will now be recorded. Hello and welcome to APS Stamp Chat. My name's Heidi Rhodes. Today's guest is Mr. Mark Ndave, who joins us from India. Mr. Dave is a second generation philatelist and brings infectious enthusiasm to the hobby wherever he goes. His children and niece are now third generation philatelists. Markand is a representative of the Royal Philatelic Society of London, a member of Club de Monte Carlo, serves as the commissioner for Monaco Phil 2021, and has been an APS member since 2007. In the spring of this year, Mr. Dave produced a series of well-attended virtual philatelic lectures and is a pioneer in organizing philatelists on the digital platform. Today, he will pre be presenting the 1929 Airmail Stamps of India, of which he and his members of his family have writ also written a book by the same title. Today's stamp chat is sponsored by the APS Editorial Department. The American Philatelist is the APS's monthly journal and one of the best places for newcomers and experienced collectors to learn more about our hobby. We know better than anyone that every collector has a passion and an interesting story to tell. And we want to hear it. Tell us about your stamp story, how you started collecting, anecdotes about your experience. Why do you love to collect what you do? and more and share it with us along with a photo of yourself and your collection to the email address aparticle at stamps.org. You could be the next person to share your story in the American Philatelist's monthly feature, My Stamp Story. And now for our feature presentation, the 1929 Airmail Stamps of India presented by Mr. Mark Ndave. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Heidi. Thank you for the wonderful introduction and all the information regarding the generations are involved in active philately. And here I start my story. This is uh, the story of the 1929 airmail stamps of India. And uh, we are going to discuss this subject today and I'm going to shed some light on the six stamps and uh, before i start my presentation good morning to america good afternoon to england and good evening india okay so what you will see in this presentation today very simple uh, outline of the presentation artists sketches the basic elements of the stamp designing, postal notices, and circulars, first take hours of the 4th November and the 20th November. Techniques, how to identify the position of the stamp in absence of a complete seat, and some of my favorite errors, and its position on the seat. So, first of all, I would like to draw your attention <clears throat> that we had a drawing competition to design this stamp and total 77 participants have participated in this competition and you can see in the list where I'm pointing the cursor it's 75 but on the number 10 there is 10 a and 10 b and that's the reason that I have written here that there were 77 participants in this competition. The dates of the entries, etc., and some of the important rules of the competitions are here. And this uh, fantastic drawing prepared by T. Archer from the Nasik Printing Press, which is in the center, and total 77 entries, as I say. And the very first entry came from Stephen Smith, the renowned aerophilatelist. And then g grant was the winner however g grant submitted two designs one with entry number 38 which got succeeded and another one with entry number 66 as well and t archer submitted total five designs with entry number 71. now grant submitted two designs 
and all of the stamp designs were decoded with the gnome day plume so the winning entry was luck at luck at last and this another entry submitted by grant its name was best try so i call it that the best try failed however the luck at last worked okay now as i said the very first entry from stephen smith here we have on the screen he submitted on the 1st of august and it was received at nasik printing press on 3rd of august this drawing you can see f a y it was very suspicious to me when i seen this drawing for first time and i rejected to purchase it considering it as a cinderella but when i went to all the archive documents from the national archive located in new delhi i came to know that the known plume of stephen smith was fay and fay harcourt is the full name of stephen's wife and that is the reason he used this name as a nom de plume so on the left is the main image on the right is the reverse of the image the winning design where number 38 g grant and what he is writing underneath this pencil drawing this is my original rough sketch on the back it is written presented to mr stephen smith so grant has presented this drawing to stephen smith and stephen smith acknowledged on 9th of december 1929 that he received this as we have already seen that t archer from the nasik security printing press submitted five drawings these are the five drawings 1 2 3 4 and the one in the center is the fifth drawing if you see this drawing where i am pointing my cursor you can clearly make your mind that this map of the india it was replaced with the india gate which is in this figure okay so he prepared this india gate design which we can see in the center with the pencil and the final line artwork and then finally it got replaced but however all of this designs were not uh, accepted and he didn't won the competition the three basic elements of the stamp and the birth of the stamp how the stamp was designed in the stamp we have the king george v portrait which is coming from the 5 rupee banknote national archive when i'm going through this it's return here king's portrait is derived from the present issue of 5 rupees banknote so this is the 5 rupee banknote the airplane is the second thing and that is the day heavy article is be at 66 and i have a cigarette card of it and the landscape is coming from the postcard and that's the postcard of the very popular vehard lake and now we will see that this postcard and if you see the lake and the hills and the palm trees whatever you see in the stamp it is coming from there in one of the correspondence on paragraph number 2 they have mentioned the landscape inserted in this design is actually a reproduction of one of the lake near bombay and when i gather the information i came to know that this lake is none of the other but it's the famous bihar lake now we will see the story of this postal notices the very first postal notice on the top they are saying the following denomination of indian airmail stamps will be available in important post offices to public from 1st october 1929 they came up with another postal notice on 20th september and they are saying now the stamps will be made available on 1st of november so it was postponed for first time and then we have a circular that uh, they are informing it they received from the director general of the post and telegraphs in india and they are informing the india house in london that the stamps will be available from 1st november after the two unsuccessful attempts finally mr rogers issued the third and final notice 
that the airmail stamps will be available on the sale at the important post offices from Monday, the 4th November, instead of as previously notified. And finally, the stamps arrived on 4th November, and here we have a first day cover, a very interesting first day cover. On the reverse, it is signed by Mika, who is the designer of the stamp. And in the front, we can see it is addressed to Miss Gertrude Collins. Gertrude Collins was one of the financer and a very dear friend of Stephen Smith. And Stephen had fired a rocket in her name, Gertrude Collins. And this is the label of that rocket, which is rocket number 165. These three, four, six, eight, and 12 ANA stamps were issued on 4th of November for international air mail rate. And the two ANAs was not issued on that date. So on which date the two ANAs was issued? So the two ANA stamp was issued on 20th December, 1929. And here we have the first cover of the two ANA stamps, again signed by the designer on the top in the margin area addressed to the famous one and only Stephen Smith in Calcutta. Okay, now before we jump in the very complex subject of the errors and positions and the varieties and how it occurred, etc., etc., this I would like to make very clear. What you are seeing on the screen, it's not a complete seat. It's a reproduction. It's an imitation. I prepared it just to give you a glimpse that how the things worked. So the printing format of the stamp was 12 into 12, 144 stamps. And there are four guide marks, two on the left and two on the right. And how the guide mark looks like. So these are the guide marks of the right side. So here we see on the position R6 and C12, it means the sixth row and 12th column of the seat here, which I have enlarged here, this guide mark is upside. And on the row seventh, it is a bit downside, which you can see. I'm sorry, there is, a, there is an error in this slide. Actually, on the downside on right, it should be R7. Please read it as R7. It's my mistake, and I apologize for it. So, which I just realized. So, these two guide marks are very important to look at the position. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So, the one falling on the row sixth position which is coming from the upside, it's on the up, upside of the stamp. And the one which is on the row seventh, it's on the bottom side of the stamp in the margin area. And they are located exactly on the left, left side like this and right side like this. All right, we're experiencing. trying to educate you that what exactly happened and then how I uh, carried my study further in absence of the complete C. So here are some more guide marks. We can see the one on the left and the one on the right. So this is on the bottom side, which we can see that's row seven. This is on the top side, so it's row six. This is row six and column 12. And this is also row six and column 12. Again, a bit more clarity to the subject. This is the position of the guide mark, the one on the top and one on the bottom. And here, one on the right side. That's the bottom guide mark. So this is the understanding of the guide mark. Now we get a little deeper in the subject with the three listed varieties of the airmail stamp so far 2018 in Stanley Gibbons catalog. The one, SG221A, the O is becoming Q in postage. So it's a, one of the very popular variety. The second variety, the treetop missing variety. 
that is SG224A, and the third and the final reversed serif. So there are two varieties in eight anas and one variety in three anas till 2018. And because of the book what I have published, the editor of the Stanley Gibbons catalog is a very dear friend of mine. Finally, he was convinced and uh, he said, why not? But this two, in fact, four varieties can go in the catalog. And they found the place from 2019 onwards. So they printed in 2019 and in the next catalog. So the one which is newly listed variety is the numeral one. The second I of India looks like a numeral one, SG221B. And that is without the Kuwait overprint. I would like to update you here that part of the set got overprinted with Kuwait overprint and a supply was sent to Kuwait. At that time, the Kuwait post office was being administered by the Bombay Postal Circle. So this variety exists without overprint and with Kuwait overprint as well. And that is SG32B. Now the second variety is the ARC variety, that is SG. 223A and with the Kuwait overprint, it is SG34A. Here we have the type 23, which is on R1 and C1. Now there are no guide marks, but we have the margin area. So R1 means this one, and C1 means obviously this one. So it's a first row and first column, and there is a variety of the broken frame here. And that's listed in my book and categorized as type 23. Here in the second block, which is the bottom right block, this is row 12, 11, and 10, and column 11. We can see from and justify from the margin area. And there is a broken uh, O in between a uh, scratch in between P and O of the postage. So we have seen this variety, which is newly listed in the Stanley Gibbons catalog, and I have categorized and uh, discovered the position row one and column 12 because of this marginal area. I can reach to the conclusion certainly that this falls here. Now we have unrecorded dev type, which is a newly discovered variety, which exists on the row 12th, but we don't have the column number because we have the only bottom margin. And because of that, I cannot tell you the column number. Another, uh, they've typed 12, which is uh, row three and column two, a very nice pearl flow before the M of mail. And that is here in this block. And because of this margin, even in absence of a complete seat, I can reach to the conclusion that it is R372. Okay, the Q variety and the beautiful block. Now this variety was also not listed in the Stanley Gibbons catalog, I think till 2017, but I reported to Stanley Gibbons that the Q variety also exists with the Kuwait overprint and now they have listed it but exactly underneath the Q variety, there is one more variety, and that is dev type two. It is on row 12th and column four. Because of the left margin, I can say that one, two, three, and four. And we have the Q variety as well. I'm sure you are finding the difficulty to see it. So here is the enlarged image of the Q and the dot above R. Very nice tiny pearl flow. Okay, and the Q, Q on cover with the Kuwait overprint. One of my very favorite cover going to America, Philadelphia, and Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, <laughs> making it more interesting, here is the enlarged image. And I was uh, preparing this PPT and I realized that because of that overprint, you will not be able to see the variety 
So what I did, I put some LED light behind the cover and click a picture on my mobile. However, it's not in a great shape, but here you go. And you can see the cube, which is here, where I'm pointing my cursor. Okay, then in Kuwait, we have the double impression variety as well in the three anas. So three anas, they have the double impression. Where I'm pointing the cursor, you can see that the numeral three it gives you a glimpse of the double impression. And on the right side, there is a part cover with two of them on one. And not only that, we have the type 38 from my book as well, and that falls on R8 and C4. And this is on the top, top left is the enlarged image of this stamp, which is coming from the cover. Now the basic stamp, stamp printed double and it was listed only under Kuwait section. I was so curious and I was hunting desperately that if the basic stamp is printed double, then how come it doesn't exist just without overprint? And I found it. I have now nearly six examples of the Tritana stamp with the double imprint. And I have categorized as and which I consider is an extreme variety. And the four anas sage varieties. Now the four anas, you can see a lot of sages. I have not seen that many sages in any of the stamp of this set. So I made a little note, four anas is the only stamp in this set of six with five to six different sages. However, in case of number of the errors and varieties, it is lowest in the number because the four ana, I don't know somehow is most accurate printing and I was not able to find that many varieties in this stamp. The Kuwait overprint. The two on the top are the forged. So there were forgeries happen for the overprint as well. And the one underneath is the genuine Kuwait overprint. So be careful because the Kuwait overprint set is uh, apparently very expensive compared to the normal set. Okay, type 12 from my book, a very nice pearl flow underneath the O of the postage, exactly on the bottom of the left leg of the A of Kuwait here. And that is falling on row 12 and column one. And a very large pearl flow here above eye of India. And that is on row 11 and column 12. And that I have categorized in my book as type 28. Oh, I love this variety. Uh, this is, I think, going to be listed one day in the catalog because we have the confirmed position and a very prominent flaw in the bottom loop of the eight. And that is here, it's row 12 and column one. And on the right side, I have prepared this diagram. The tree top missing variety is a very popular variety, which is falling on the row 11 and column six. Exactly underneath the tree top missing variety, there is one more variety. And what is it? It is a little desk between I and L. So if we have the position of the tree top missing, then now because of this margin, we have the position of this I desk L as well. And moreover, I have nearly six to seven pairs, used pairs in my collection, four, four mint pairs and three covers, all with vertical pairs. And I have gone through every single pair and exactly underneath the tree top missing variety, this desk between I and L of male is existing. Very interesting variety. And in my book, it is categorized as type one. 12 anas. I have identified all this variety, type 25, type 26, and type 28. And I was fortunate to acquire this block 
because of this block, I reached to the conclusion that all this error, can you see the pulse between A and P of the India postage in between? Broken lines behind the king's head and then a flat scratch at the center of the floral ornament to IN of India, which is here. All these three varieties because of this just one block, because it has a margin on the left and as well as on the bottom, I was able to reach to the conclusion that what is the position. So all of these varieties are falling on column three on row nine, row 12 and row 10. Okay, this stamp design was printed on the stationery as well. So when you are exhibiting in the traditional class, if there is a stationery printed with the same design of the stamp, then you should have to include this as well. It's better to include, I must say that. So I have this entire bundle of the, of the envelopes which was sold for rupees three and 14 annas in those days. And it has a variety. Oh yes, two of them. The one on the right, extreme right, without overprint. And when they reduced the rate to seven and a half annas, again, I have an envelope in mint condition, both of them, and both of them has this variety. And moreover, I have nearly 25 to 27 used covers with and without overprint of this eight ana stationary envelope and the next slide is amazing it's a first day usage on first may of 1930 and with my variety a dot ir a very nice tiny pearl flow in between a and i addressed to david azra lady azra and david azra was a very good couple and Lady Ezra uh, was, uh, was a female philatelist, and David Ezra was also a philatelist. They used to fund Stephen Smith for all the rocket experiments and the pigeon experiments. So this cover on the very first day, Stephen has addressed to David Ezra. Okay, four on us postal stationary postcard, not, over, not only the envelope, they have printed the postcard also with the same design of the stamp and i have the entire bundle of the eight postcards which was sold for two rupees in those days and here is the first day usage of that postcard 15 july 1931 a very rare one on the very first day it is being used as a airmail postcard and the clerk realized the clerk thought that it's underpaid and he put the mark insufficiently paid for transmission by airmail. But then he referred the circular or whatever the document available in the post office and he striked it out with the blue crayon. Oh no, it's paid and it's good to go. World's first airmail stationary postcard. This is world's first airmail stationary postcard. Yes. And here is the story. If you want to read it, I will hold for a few seconds so you can go through it. And let's move forward. The last and latest known usage from Kuwait, and that too without overprint. Two annas, three annas, four annas, six annas, eight annas, twelve annas, and it's not philatelically used without overprint and commercial because this all six stamps were not sufficient to carry this cover to USA. So they put another King George sixth half anna on the backside along with a very nice, beautiful Kuwait Nawab or King or whatever his label and uh, it has a new york arrival mark on the back and here is the story of this cover 
and what I want to say, I haven't seen official commercial usage after India became independent in 1947. Kuwait was administered by Pakistan till 1st April of 1948. And here is the story. The full set is 35 annas and King George six half anna on reverse of the cover. And you can read that what was the rate, the three and a half annas for the ordinary surface and the 29 annas was the air fee, three annas for registration fee. Altogether, it's a correct postage rate. What you have seen today in my presentation, artist sketches, basic element of the stamp, postal notices and circulars, first day covers, techniques. I explained you that how I am identifying all these positions of the errors, what I have discovered. So usually I spot one error and then I'm keeping it in my mind, going for another one, then okay, I, find, I found another one, then the third one, then the fourth one. And then I'm trying to look it in my large multiples, what I have acquired and I'm still acquiring. So when I spot the same error in one of the large multiple along with the margin area, then I can reach to the conclusion that it is falling on this particular position. I'm sure Heidi is going to handle the question answer session. However, if you have any question, even after this presentation, just take your mobile in your hand, open the camera or the QR code reader, point any of them, Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, and you can follow me. And I am there to answer the question even after this presentation. Even those who are watching on the YouTube later, the recording, they can also do the same thing and reach to me. Thank you very much indeed for listening me with full of patience, enough for today and questions, if any. And may I ask you, Heidi, shall I st stop the screen setting so I can see all certainly, those people? Certainly, Mark, and go for it. <laughs> because I can't Lovely. see all of you. Lovely, friend. Yes. This is Mark and favorite part. Come. Here's My son is also here. Yes, and we and have, I, yes. I hi, young everyone. faces. Mike and Yen Marine, and hello, young people. <laughs> so we we do have um we do have some questions in the chat box. And friends, I I don't see that anyone has said please ask me in private. So listen to your name and go ahead and unmute yourself. First question comes from Tom Bowman. Hi, Dave. My question is uh, that you use those uh, plate markings. So does that make it tougher for you to find these errors by not having like the US has plate block numbers? Yeah, this uh, this stamps were printed using the lithography technique and unfortunately, apart from the margins and apart from this very important four guide marks, the two on the left and the two on the right, there is nothing to reach to the conclusion. If you have just a single stamp without this, that on which position it falls. Yeah, it does make it tough for you to find your mistakes and uh, stuff like that. <laughs> but we have plate block numbers. We can just go search for plate block numbers. No, there are no plate block numbers. Unfortunately, not. But and that's why it's uh, it's very challenging. Thank you. Uh, next question. Thank you, Mark. And the next question. Listen for your name, please. Gwen Harris, you have a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, yeah. Gwen. Hi you? there, Mark. And the OK. Nice, oh, nice okay. to hear everybody. Thank you for thank today. You. And um, thank you to the APS for uh, putting this on. Uh, and greetings to Pennsylvania. My old, uh, my old university from 1978. Um, so uh, that's when I had hair. But that's another story. My question, Mark, and is I'm very keen on fly spec philately. I collect uh, George V Downey heads, amongst other things. And a lot of the varieties aren't always constant. 
Um, it was obviously a, a, a time of the printing and the style of the way things went on. How many of the flaws that you're identifying are constant and do they change over time with different printings, do you know? A very good question. So there are two questions actually. So the flaws, the constant flaws, I have discovered nearly 250 flaws and 223 of them are published in my book. Mm -hmm. The constant ones are nearly 57 for which I have identified the position. And mm -hmm. as a just constant, because I have three, four, or maybe five or more examples, I think they are nearly, nearly 90 to 100. Right, and, okay. uh, yeah. And the second thing you have asked, uh, what was your second question? It was, it was to do with of the flaws that you're identifying do they change over time in as much oh, yeah. were the plate with the plates repaired or anything excellent yeah i just missed that question so thanks for uh, repeating again so what happened the the plates the same plates they have used for three annas four six eight and twelve annas the first five stamps for international rate mm -hmm. the two annas which they prepared on 20th of December for domestic airmail rate. They made several printings and the plate repairing and all sort of things happened in that two ANA stem. And because of that, I have a block, say for example, on XYZ position with a particular variety. And what happens? Then I see another similar block and then that variety disappears. But no, no I'm not. <laughs> Now I'm not able to reach to the conclusion whether the variety was there before or later or when, how, mm. uh, how it got repaired. If in some of the cases I have the covers with both of those varieties and because of the dates uh, we have on the cover or mm -hmm. a used stamp with the data on that particular stamp, we can find out some more information whether the variety was there earlier or later. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Hello, Kathy. How are you? So we have uh, so CJ has uh, she's got for philately things. You'll see her on Twitter and in, uh, Twitter. Go ahead, CJ. I know CJ. Yes. I, know, I met her Hello. in that Colorado. We had dinner together. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I saw your presentation in Denver, and it was really great there. I bought your book. Um, it's a beautiful book. You bought um, my book. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I said to Heidi when she posted a picture of it on Twitter that uh, a scan of the book doesn't do it justice. The colors are so vibrant, and it's so easy to flip through and look at. Um, I, I love it. Um, <laughs> I was curious about the postcards and the postal stationery. Um, do you know about how many dies were used to print those? And if postcards were printed like the US postcards where they're in a sheet, um, do you know if you can plate any of the postcard errors? Mm, plating, uh, I'm not sure whether possible or not. There is only one error, which is constant one, and I have discovered and categorized that they've typed one in the eight ANA stationary envelope, and uh, that was printed, if I'm not mistaken, on the Titagore watermark sheet, if you open the entire envelope. The postcard does exist in two variants, the one normal one and the second one with the India London imprint on it. And uh, I don't know in which format and how big the seat was, it, they were printed because the concerned and relative information is not available anywhere, unfortunately. Well, thank you so much. And um, I know you've done so much work on these. Um, it's really impressive what you've put together. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, CJ. Friends, do we have any other questions for Markand? I have my friend from all the way South India. I can see on his camera, Mahesh Parekh. Mahesh by Jesse Krasna, how are you? Hold you on. need to unmute your microphone, Mahesh. 
if you really want to talk to me. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, there you go, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's okay now. Hi, Mark, and how are you? I'm doing very well, Mahesh. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just fascinated. The research, what you're doing is amazing. In fact, not many people have taken this subject uh, in the recent past. But what you have done for the last few years for airmail is amazing. And I hope a lot of students uh, develop this uh, as, a, as a topic and uh, move forward. So um, main challenges for people like them is uh, to get uh, literature. And what you have done is, again, a commendable uh, work brought out a book so that they have a reference and in future they can definitely learn a lot from uh, your publications. Thanks a lot once again, Markan, for coming forward and giving your presentation. I really appreciate you. My pleasure, Mahesh. My pleasure, indeed. And uh, yes. Heidi, let me let me brief you that Mahesh is uh, one of the very important philatelists in South India and they are running a very good association called South India Philatelic Association. Yes, it's, uh, Hello, 65 years, almost 65 years now, the association now is running successfully. Very well, good. thank you for joining us. Thank you so thanks, much. Thanks for, thanks for organizing this wonderful uh, virtual meet. Oh, it's our pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Mark, and will you, uh, and I can type it as you tell us, uh, tell us where we can get your book, please. <laughs> You're frozen. Oh, little technical difficulties, but that's all right. Um, okay, I'm just looking here in the chat box, but oh, we. No, I missed you for nearly. Just for a moment, Mark, and can we? Can you hear us? Okay, the sound's going in and out, but if anybody was able to snap that, that QR code, then I'm sure that you can find out where to get Mr. Dave's book. Um, otherwise, if you are on social media, Mr. Dave is all over, and I, can, I, I will put uh, where you can get his book on Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram. And if there aren't any more questions, then um, it is time to bid adieu for another episode of Stamp Chat. Thank you, Mark, and for being our guest on Stamp Chat today. And thank you for watching. Today's Stamp Chat was sponsored by the APS Editorial Department and the American Philatelist monthly feature, My Stamp Story. We're letting APS members like you Take the reins and tell readers why you love to collect and what brought you to where you are today. We've heard from educators who use stamps in their classrooms to teach history, people who began collecting while on active military duty, artists, lawyers, environmental act advocates. The list goes on and on. Now we want to hear from you. Email your story to a particle at stamps.org. That's a particle at stamps.org. Include a photo of yourself, please, and your collection. We look forward to sharing your stamp story. For more stamp chats, visit the APS YouTube channel where you can find over 50 hours of presentations. Use the comment box below the video to keep the conversation going. While there, subscribe to our channel and stay in the know of newly updated Stamp Chats. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next Stamp Chat. Until then, collect, connect, and visit stamps.org to become a member. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye. Bye, everybody. I can see Pratisad and okay. Mr. Sinoy. Okay, we're not, we're not recording anymore, so let your hair down and party.